Hello dear students and viewers, how are you? I welcome you to another exciting and interesting program of English in which we shall focus upon the parts of speech and the errors our students tend to make. Basically they make these errors because of lack of information and knowledge about these parts of speech. We all learn through errors and mistakes but we need to overcome them for the correct use of English language. Before we touch upon the main topic, we must know the difference between an error and mistake. Let's join the classroom to know the difference between the two. Um, let me welcome you all, dear students, to this class. Uh, we shall today discuss three important parts of speech and the errors that our students are liable to make. Uh, but before that, I would like to tell you the difference between an error and a mistake. An error is basically caused when there is lack of knowledge about the target language or when the learner is still in the process of mastering a language and its system. For instance, a British learner of Urdu might say, Mene kal school jaya. Now you know it is wrong, but it is only an error because the learner has still not mastered the language or you as learners of English language might say I shall went to Karachi tomorrow again it's an error of grammar and not a mistake now let's see what is a mistake a mistake is caused because of lack of concentration or forgetfulness or slips of the tongue or sheer carelessness even a learned person who has mastered the language can make mistakes and a learner is able to correct his mistake but he may not be able to correct an error to correct an error he needs to master the language and the grammar so you learned the difference between an error and mistake now we shall focus upon our main subject that is prepositions, nouns, adverbs and their kinds. Further in this program you will be taught about these three important items about which students usually make errors. This will help you in your examinations as you are asked to attempt a question about these three important items. Let's join the classroom to learn prepositions and its use. Students in uh, this class today uh, will first talk about an important part of speech which is preposition. Now preposition is a word which is used to show the relation of a noun or a pronoun to some other object in the sentence. We use a lot of prepositions in our day-to-day -day life. I'm just going to give you three examples and see how we have used prepositions in these. The first speaker on the program is my brother. Number two, his cousin will teach in England next week. And number three, we edited the article for the magazine. In these sentences, the prepositions on, in, and for. And now, to give you an example in this class, I'll show you the relation between this marker and this piece of paper and we say that the marker is on the paper, the marker is under the paper, the marker is near the paper, the marker is by the paper. So uh, by this example you can understand how relations between two things are formed. And now there's a visual for you. There's a situation and certain prepositions have been used in it. We'll watch the situation and then I'll ask you what prepositions have been used. Nadia, Adnan and Saleh were waiting for their uncle. After some time he knocked at the door. Adnan rushed toward the door and opened it. All children gathered round their uncle and stood by him. Mr. Amir shook hands with his brother. Then they all sat down on the sofas. The children were very fond of their uncle. During their discussion, the servant walked into the room and stood near the guest. 
After some time, he went out of the room. Somebody again knocked at the door, and Mr. Amir looked through the window to see who was at the door. The new guest came in, and everybody stood up for him. They chatted for some time, and soon the clock above the fireplace struck nine. They all sat on the chairs around the dining table and started the dinner. So, dear students, you were learning prepositions and you have watched a situation where different prepositions have been used. Some of the common prepositions are about, above, across, at, against, etc. Let's join the classroom where the teacher will tell us how and why students make prepositional mistakes. In fact, our students face problems when they try to translate the prepositions of Urdu into English or those of English into Urdu. You've got to understand that prepositions are quite differently used in the two languages. You should also get used to speaking more and more English so that you are able to master and know how to use prepositions. And now for a quick review and test, I'm going to give you a few sentences and you will give me the appropriate answers. All right, Bilal, uh, please tell us, uh, complete this sentence. The river flows dash the bridge. Below the bridge. Yes, the river flows below the bridge. Rabia, you'll tell us. The dog ran dash the road. The dog ran across the road. Across the road. So across is a preposition. Wasik, you'll tell us. She spoke dash me in French. She spoke to me in French. To me in French. So to is another preposition. All right. The next sentence. Shazad, you'll answer the next sentence. He goes to the park dash Sundays. Mm, sir, he goes to the park by Sunday. Now, by Sundays is, by is a preposition, but it is wrongly used in this sentence. The right answer is, he goes to the park on Sundays. Right. Nagus, you'll tell us, Jimmy is very fond dash music. Jimmy is very fond of music. Of music. So that's the right use of the preposition of. All right. Uh, Sumera will now tell us, complete the sentence. Do not try dash spilled milk. Do not try over spilled milk. Do not try over spilled milk. So over is another preposition. Dear students, now we'll deal with another important item, that is the noun. The teacher will tell you the definition of noun and its three important kinds, which are common noun, proper noun, and abstract noun. To know them, let's join the classroom. Uh, and now, dear students, we'll take up the second part of speech, which is noun. Noun is simply defined as a word which is used to name a person, a place, a thing, or an idea. We'll go a step ahead and we'll tell you how nouns can be classified. And then we'll be dealing with three kinds of nouns. They are common, proper, and abstract noun. We'll first take up the common noun. A common noun is a name given in common to any person, place, or thing. Whereas a proper noun is given to some particular person, place, or thing. Now, here's a comparison between a proper and a common noun. We'll first see how they differ from each other. Princess is a common noun, but Diana is a proper noun. Boy is a common noun, but David is a proper noun. City is common, but London is a proper noun. Country is common, but France is a proper noun. And now abstract nouns. I hope you are familiar with the term abstract. Abstract is anything which is in the idea. Abstract things cannot be touched or seen in concrete. Now, abstract is either a state or a quality. 
To give you a few examples, here are a few abstract nouns. Honor, justice, peace, liberty, civilization, love, hatred, and kindness, etc. Abstract nouns are formed from nouns, adjectives, and verbs. For instance, he is a kind man and he is known for his kindness. Kind is an adjective whereas kindness is an abstract noun. He always obeys his parents and his obedience is his greatest quality. In the first sentence, obeys is a verb whereas obedience is an abstract noun and Peter keeps no slaves and he is against slavery. The word slave is a noun whereas slavery is an abstract noun. So dear students this was all about noun and now we will deal with adverbs. Dear students do you know what is an adverb? Let's join the classroom to know what it is. And now, uh, students, we will deal with another very important part of speech, which is adverb. Students, an adverb is a word which modifies the meaning of a verb. It adds something to it and tells how an action is performed. Here are again a few examples for you. She sings delightfully. He has shamefully been treated and John runs very quickly. In these three sentences, delightfully, shamefully and quickly are the words that are modifying the meaning of the verbs in these sentences. So this was all about adverbs. To further understand adverbs and its four kinds, which are adverbs of time, frequency, manner and place, Let's join the classroom again. Students, adverbs can be divided into four main classes. They are adverbs of time, adverbs of frequency, adverbs of place, and adverbs of manner. We'll first take up the adverb of time and give you a few examples. Let's see. We shall now begin to work. Number two, he comes here daily. Number three, I hurt my tongue yesterday. Wasted time never returns. And now we take up the adverbs of frequency. They tell us how often an action is occurred or takes place. For instance, I have been to France twice. Number two, Patricia often makes mistakes. David frequently visits his old friends and he always tries to do his best. In these sentences, twice, often and frequently show how frequently these actions take place. And now the adverb of place. The adverb of place in fact talks about positions. We'll show you a few examples and let's see how it is. Please wait here. The little lamb followed her everywhere. She looked up and the horse galloped away. In these examples, here, up and away are showing positions. And now the last kind of adverb is the adverb of manner. It tells us in what manner an action has taken place. For instance, here are a few examples for you. Jane reads clearly. The story is well written. The Muslims fought bravely and Peter works very hard. Now clearly well bravely and hard are the adverbs of manner. They tell us how those actions took place. 
Fine, students, uh, it's also important to know that most of our students believe that adverbs always end with li, which is not right. There are many adverbs which may not end at li. For instance, he works hard. Now this hard is also an adverb, but there is no ly at the end. So you were getting lessons about kinds of adverbs. It's time now for some consolidation of the topic. Let's see how the teacher reinforces it. And students, to consolidate what we have studied today about adverbs. Here are a few examples and you'll see that there are different adverbs used in these sentences. Number one, I advised him to try again telling about frequency. That day he arrived late, telling about time. Anderson walked backward, an adverb of place. The child slept soundly, an adverb of manner. Do not walk so fast is an adverb of manner. Her son is in China, an adverb of place. I have heard this before, is an adverb of time. He seldom comes here, it's an adverb of frequency. Students, we showed you a visual when we were studying prepositions. We'll again show you the same visual and this time our focus is the adverb. Let's see how adverbs are used in this situation. Nadia, Adnan and Saleh were anxiously waiting for their uncle. After some time, he knocked hard at the door. Adnan frantically rushed towards the door and quickly opened it. All children gathered happily round their uncle and stood by him. Mr. Amir warmly shook hands with his brother. Adnan quietly stood behind him and Saleh beside his sister. So you saw students that in this situation uh, the adverb of manner was mostly used. And in our day to day life also we use this adverb very frequently. So dear students, in this program we tried to teach you about important parts of speech and their correct use. You still need to practice them for effective consolidation and perfection. Till the next program, take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.